In the previous session, we have seen SDS key generation. So, having a brief recap for what was done, we considered SDS, right? And the key chosen was 101. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. So we know that SDS input is a 10 bit key and this internally generates two sub keys K1 and K2. So we have already done this example in the previous session whose link is mentioned in the, in the description. Please have a look. So we obtained the two sub keys where the first sub key was 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. 100 zero, zero. and the second sub key obtained was 0 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 right so in the previous session we have seen that SDS takes in a 10 bit key as input and internally generates two sub keys each of length 8 bits right so now let us go through the entire process of encryption. So this is the encryption block diagram. I have drawn halfway. So you have the plain text which is of length 8 bits followed by an initial permutation. Then we have a function fk. So this function fk is repeated twice. So I will not be repeating it here. So in the first round of function fk we use the sub key k1 and then we have a swapping function and then the function fk is repeated again where the sub key k2 is used. Right? So let's take an example and let us see how we can get the ciphertext from the plain text. So let me consider an 8 bit plain text. So let the input be 1 0 0 1 0 1 1 1 Okay, so this is an 8-bit input. The initial permutation. The initial permutation sequence is defined as 2, 6, 3, 1, 4, 8, 5 and 7. So this is the sequence. So now let me number the uh, bits. So this is bit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what happens after initial permutation? So after IP, what do I get? First I get the second bit which is 0. Next the sixth bit which is 1. Bit 3 which is 0. Bit 1 which is 1. Bit 4 which is 1. Bit 8 which is 1. Bit 5 which is 0 and bit 7 which is 1. So I end up getting 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1. So this is after the initial permutation. Right? So next we observe that these 8 bits are divided into two halves, the left 4 and the right 4. Right? So we have these 8 bits which are divided into two halves. Let me call it as L and R. Now point to be remembered, the left 4 bits L gets changed whereas the right 4 bits remain unchanged after the first round. But it is the right 4 bits which enter into this function which is, being, which is enclosed in red which is referred to as function F. Okay? Where you have number of permutation and substitution operations happening. So now the right 4 bits enter E slash P. So E slash P stands for expansion bar permutation. So what happens here, you have a 4 bit input which is permuted and expanded to an 8 bit output. So this is the sequence here, a 4 bit input mentioned here, expanded and permuted to give an 8 bit. So what is the sequence for E slash P? The sequence for E slash P is 4123 2341. Okay. 
right? So four one two three two three four one. So now what happens? The right four is one one zero one. Okay. So these sequences are fixed in the algorithm. So this is bit one two three four. So after e slash p, I get bit four four one two three. Two, three, four, one. So four bit four is one. Bit one is one. Two is one. Three is zero. Next two is one. Three is zero. Four is one, and bit one is one. So what do we get? We get one, 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 zero, one, zero, one, one. So this is what is obtained. So now to this output of e slash p. What are we doing? I have the sub key K one, which is XOR. So I have XOR of K one. So K one is one zero one zero zero one zero zero. So what has to be remembered is if we change the key, of course K one and K two will also change. So therefore you would get a different ciphertext, right? So you XOR, you get zero. One XOR one is zero. One XOR zero is one. One XOR one is zero zero. One XOR zero is one zero. XOR one is one. And then one XOR zero is one. One XOR zero is one. Right. So we end up getting zero one zero zero one 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 one. Right. So this is what I get here after XOR. Now, what do we observe from the figure? These eight bits are again divided into left four and right four, and they go to S naught and S one. Now, what are these S boxes? So these are known as S boxes. So there are two S boxes, S naught and S one. So S naught and S one here in STS, they basically represent a four cross four matrix with numbers varying from zero to three, which have been defined. So let me write these S boxes. The S boxes. So S naught is defined as it's a four cross four matrix with values one zero three two, three two one zero, zero two one three, and three one three two. Okay. And what about S one? S one is zero one two three two zero one three three zero one zero, and then we have two one zero three. Okay. So we have a four cross four matrix, four rows and four columns. So let me number this. This is row zero, row one, row two, row three, column zero, column one, column two, column three. So why we are doing this? We'll see that later. So this is again row zero, one, two, three, column zero, one, two, three. So these four bits go to S naught, right? So we have the data zero. One zero zero. So in this, the first and the fourth bit, which is zero zero, it's equivalent to zero. This indicates the row. So I need to select row zero. So the first and the fourth bits. Indicate the row, whereas the second and the third, which is one zero, one zero is two. Indicate the column. Okay, so this indicates the column two. So I choose row zero and column two, and the value is three. So it's binary equivalent. Is one one. 
So output of S not S not, which is three, is one. Okay, so we get a two bit output here, which is one one. So similarly for S one, I have one 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 one. So what is the row? The row is three, and column also is three. Right, because it is one one. So row three and column three again. I have three here. So output of S one is again three, which is one. Right. So output of S not and S one is one 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 one. Right. So what is the output of S box? So you have the output of S box which goes to P4, which is again permutation. So what is the permutation? The permutation is two, four, three, one. So let me write it here. It is two, four, three, and one. So the permutation is two, four, three, one. Since all the bits are one. The output of P4 does not change, which is one 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 one. Right. So now what is happening? The output of P4 is XOR with the left L after initial permutation. So you are going to XOR it with zero one zero one. Right. So we get one zero one zero. So I get one zero one zero here, and then the right half, which remains unchanged, is one one zero one. So we have finished with the first round of operation. So after the first round of operation, we observe that the left four bits have undergone a change, whereas the right four bits move on without any change. So I need to change the right four bits. So therefore, these four bits are swapped. So R becomes L, the right becomes left, and the left becomes right. So I get one one zero one and one zero one zero here. Okay, and the process repeats. So let's see what happens. So we have the data, which is one one zero one one zero one zero, right? One one zero one one zero one zero. So this is the left, and this is the right. So now we have the second stage, which is the same as the first, with the only difference that we'll be using K two. Right. So now, what enters into the function at the right, which is one zero one zero. So let me erase these values. So I have the right four, which enters e slash p. Okay. So I have this is one two three four, the right. So now we have four, but four is zero. Bit one is one. Bit two is zero. Bit three is one. Then zero one zero one. So this is after e slash p. The right after e slash p. Okay. So let me write this again. One zero one zero one zero one zero one. So this is XOR with K two. So after E slash P, we have XOR with with K two here, which comes here. So K two is zero one zero 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 one one. Right. So we get zero 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 one. Let me write it below this. Zero zero one one right. So this is again zero one one 
0. Right? So 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 is what I get after XORing it with K2 in the second round of operation. So again, the left 4 bits go to S0 and the right 4 bits go to S1. So let's see what they are. So the left 4 bits. So these values would change. So the left 4 bits is 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay. So 0 and 1, they indicate the row position. Zero, 1, which is 1, the row position, and 0, 0 is column, which is 0. So here now, what do we choose? We have to choose row 1. So we choose row 1, so let me indicate it by, so row 1, and column 0. Value is again 1, 1. So output of S1 is again 1, 1. Sorry, S0 is again 1, 1. Next, S1. I have 0, 1, 1, 0. So 0, 0. So we get row 0. And then 1, 1, column 3. So row 0 and column 3, which is again 3. So again output of S1 is 1, 1. So again I get 1, 1, 1, 1 as the output of the S box S0 and S1. Again given to permutation P4. So that does not change because all the 4 bits are 1. And then it is XOR with the left half. What is the left half? The left half is 1, 1, 0, 1. So the left half is 1, 1, 0, 1. So I get 0, 0, 1, 0. So I have the left half which is 0, 0, 1, 0 and the right half which comes unaltered in the second round of operation which is 1, 0, 1, 0. So this is after round 2 or FK2, the second round of operation. So now at the end so after the second round of operation, what are we left with? We are left with IP inverse and we get the ciphertext. Okay, so we are left with permutation inverse and we get the ciphertext. So what is IP inverse? It is 4, 1, 3, 5. 7, 2, 8, 6. 4, 1, 3, 5, 7, 2, 8, 6. So this is bit 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So after IP, after IP inverse, I get, so I have bit 4, which is 0, bit 1, which is 0, 3, 5, 1, 1 and then I have 7, 2. 7 is 1, 2 is 0, 8, 6. 8 is 0, 6 is 0. So I get 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0 and this is the ciphertext. Okay, so we have seen how we can encrypt using SDS. So let me just repeat, an SDS takes in an 8-bit plain text, you have initial permutation which is given by this and then the 8-bit data is divided into left and the right 4. So in the first round of operation, the left 4 bits they are changed, they undergo a change, whereas the right four bits go unchanged. Okay, and the first round of operation FK uses the first subkey K1. 
Then the right and the left four bits are swapped, and in the second round of operation, we use the sub key K2. And finally, we have IP inverse, and then you will get the ciphertext. So now this is encryption, wherein the input is plain text and the output is ciphertext. So using this, so if we know the working operation of SDS, simplified DS, it becomes very easy for us to understand the working operation of data encryption standard.